Hi everyone, I'm Emily. And I'm Vince. And this is The Lighthouse <laughs> Lowdown. Very good intro. Woo-hoo! 50th episode. 5 Edition. It's very exciting. The big 5 Big moment. I kind of, I've said this before, but when I started this, I wanted us to get to 15, and that was my goal. See? So. Look at us. So Boom. we're doing something special for this episode. I wanted it to be special. Uh, we don't have a history of Rui because I suspect <laughs> that this is going to be very long. Oh, okay. Nice. Or at least there's a possibility for it to be pretty long because I took lots of notes. Okay. Which is funny because it's like 95% history lesson, 5% lighthouse. We love history. We also love lighthouses. Yeah, they're in there. It's just not a lighthouse history is fun too. A major, a major boom. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're talking about, excuse my pronunciation, the liberty éclairant le monde, or liberty enlightening the world, also best known as Statue of Liberty. Lady Liberty. My lady, my nice. lady Liberty. So you were speaking French. Yeah. France, Francais. France. I don't know how to say that. There's lots of French names in here. Yeah. And there's like an English pronunciation, which is just sad. And <laughs> the French pronunciation and the guy, it's like um, a video you can watch that it's like he did a series of prominent French people in history, how to pronounce their names. And he's French. And so he'll say it and he's like, I know it's really hard for people uh, who don't speak French to say this. So here's the English pronunciation. I'm like, oh boy. That's so funny. <laughs> can we have a crutch? So most people know what the Statue of Liberty is. I'm assuming internationally because you know we know very i mean we know what the eiffel tower is so i would think people know what the lady i think so liberty is i think it's one of our international symbols yeah but i'll break it down so that for the people that don't know they can hear about the statue of liberty so it's an enormous copper neoclassical sculpture in new york city on liberty island in the new york harbor it's a figure of libertas which i could not find the pronunciation for so (laughs) That one's Latin, and it's the Roman goddess of liberty or freedom. Oh. So she's supposed to be a depiction of a Greek god, I think. I did not know that. Yeah. In her right hand, she holds a torch, and in the left is a tablet that says July 4th, 1776, which was in Roman numerals, which was when um, the U.S. declared independence. And at her feet are a broken shackle and chains that she's walking out of, which signifies the abolition of slavery after the American Civil War. And the idea for her was actually born at the very end of the American Civil War by a French abolitionist who supported the Union during the Civil War. I did not know it was related to the Civil mm-hmm. War at all. Directly related. Wow. Which and, is very interesting. The, uh, abolition of slavery. Yeah. So from the back, you can see that her other foot is pushing off. So it's like she's stepping out of the chains of yeah. slavery. Cool. Very cool. On her head is a crown with seven spikes, which signifies the sun, the seven seas, and the seven continents, which is why she's called Liberty Enlightening the World and not just Liberty Enlightening, you know, the Americas or whatever. That's awesome. It was a gift from the French to the United States. It was. And that's basically as far as it goes in, like, American history classes. They just say, like, ah, it was a gift from the French. But there's so much cool history and, like, how it came to be that... um, I'm going to cover it. I'm going to freaking cover it. Awesome. I was going (laughs) to ask a bunch of questions, but I'll hold my tongue. (laughs) Okay. So where did she come from? She was a gift from the French people, which is important to specify that the government was not involved in anything that happened with the Statue of Liberty. Really? Like there was some, I mean, obviously there was communication. It had to be like, uh, I think the French government funded the shipment of the Statue of Liberty, but everything was funded by the people French people and U.S. people, because the French funded the building of the statue and the U.S. funded the building of the pedestal, which is like half the height of the entire statue. Nice. I'll go into it. I'm getting ahead of myself. So the idea for the Statue of Liberty was born in 1865 at the end of the Civil War. A French historian and abolitionist, Edouard de Laboulaye. <laughs> Laboulaye, yeah. <laughs> if anybody watches um, National Treasure. National Treasure. He's in there. Is that the second one? Mm, it must be. I don't know. Oh, no. Maybe it's the first one. I just remember them saying La Boulay. Yeah. He La gets Boulay all excited lady. talking to the French police. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. This is off yeah, topic. Another drone. Type 
it's just a little bit. But there is a third national treasure, like, kind of in the works. Oh, no. No, no, come on. It's good. Nick Cage is going to be in it. Okay. And it's the same uh, producer and everything. All right. I have doubts. Okay, yeah, maybe I shouldn't get my hopes up too But I high. hope it's great. <laughs> okay, so anyway, Laboulaye suggested a monument to commemorate 100 years of independence. That would be in 1876. The Whoa. <laughs> the perseverance of American democracy and the abolition of slavery. So it's supposed to nice. kind of just be like an all in one gift to the American people. Yeah. The conversation inspired Frederick Augusta. Damn it. <laughs> Bartoldi. Bartoldi. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so, so sorry. I'm glad this is not my episode. I'm, yeah. Bartoldi. Bartoldi. Uh, who was a French artist, French sculptor. Although he didn't start work on it right away due to having other projects in the work. And this is this is very interesting. He In the late 1860s, so around the same time that this mm. was suggested by his friend, Laboulaye, he approached the ruler of Egypt, I guess, with a plan to build Egypt carrying the light to Asia, which was going to be a huge lighthouse. What? Hang on. Boom. Wow. This was his plan for it. So you... You can clearly see, like, the Statue of Liberty, kind of, like, yeah. what her form came from by looking at a picture of what his plans were for this lighthouse. That's awesome. Yeah. So, it was going to be a depiction of an ancient Egyptian female peasant robed and holding a torch aloft at the northern entrance of the Suez Canal in Port Said. Oh, yeah. Because it had just opened, and so it was, like, this big deal. He wanted to make this statue yeah. in this lighthouse to go at the front, but... It would have been too expensive for Egypt to have. Foot the bill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> the, Suez, the Suez Canal is the one that got blocked by a cargo ship not long ago. Remember oh, whole, no way. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that was two years ago exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was two years ago. Time really is getting weird. It doesn't exist. <laughs> but anyway, so obviously you can see how we got our Statue of Liberty from his earlier plans. It's kind of crazy. Awesome. Cool painting, too, just to show a mock-up. Yeah, I wonder if, if he did it because, I mean, he was an artist, so. Let me just throw this together real quick. Yeah, uh, here, let me just uh, show you what I'm thinking. Yeah. Do you have watercolors? <laughs> 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 so anyway, in 1871, Bartleby sailed to the U.S. To, I'm, I guarantee I'm saying that wrong, and I'm going to say his name so many times during this episode, so I want to apologize in advance to everybody. We know. Especially we know the French mean. people who gifted us this amazing statue. But he sailed to the U.S. to pitch the idea for his sculpture because it wasn't a government thing. He had to go and actually convince people to donate and like be on board yeah. for having this this big statue. When he arrived on the boat coming into the harbor, he saw Bedloe's Island and knew that it would be the perfect place. And I have a map, Wonder although I don't think I'm close enough for it to be super helpful. But if you look, oh, yeah, you can see it. It's underneath okay. this New Jersey. That's um, Bedloe's Island which is where we currently have the Statue of Liberty. And see how, like, there's this um, dotted line around it? Yeah. It's technically in New Jersey, but it's owned by New York. They, like, worked out the details huh. so that they could still keep the island whenever, like, lines were getting redrawn. That's crazy. Isn't that cool? I did not know that. So what was there before? Wait, was was it Bedloe's Island? It right? was already owned by the government because it was a defensive position oh, for coming yeah. into the harbor. So. Good spot. So that was the good thing is that he got there, wanted this island, and President Grant assured him that they'd be able to use it because they already owned it. <laughs> so he had some say in, you know, where they were going to put it. Of course, he needed uh, like government agreement for where he was going to put this colossal statue. Yeah. So Bartoldi. <laughs> Crossed the United States twice by rail, spreading the idea everywhere he went for eventual funding and support. This guy just got on a train and just crossed the entire United States twice no just to deal. get the word out there. I just, I never considered that the actual sculptor would go out and just be like, hey, fund my statue. Like this was a starving artist sort of thing. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's quite an adventure. And especially because now we know him. He's like, it's a big name. He did yeah. great things. Like. All kinds of cool stuff, but before anything, he was just a guy trying to get his name out there and get his art out there and Crazy. did it <laughs> in the biggest way possible. So at that time, like I just told you, it's a depiction of Libertas. Liberty? <sighs> yeah. Liber <laughs> what? Libertas, is that just means liberty? It's the, the Roman goddess. Oh, the goddess. Okay. Yeah. 
Right. Probably where the word liberty comes from. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I think it's just liberty in Latin. But she was already depicted a ton in the United States. So it wasn't like this weird figure that he just pulled out of nowhere. It okay, was like good. It was on, um, oh, I actually have pictures. I, I am, also did not I am this. fully set in my slideshow. Pictures, please. Pictures. Boom. Wow. So the first picture is what's on top of the U.S. Capitol building. And it's a depi- it's called um, Statue of Freedom, which is also Libertas. And there's like a whole bunch of history and drama huh. surrounding this because a lot of people thought she was a Native American when they is put it, it up there. Tassels. Yeah. yeah and her headdress yeah. or, you know, like her helmet was different and they had to American change vibe. it because, yeah, there's like all kinds of stuff that happened with the building of this statue, which I didn't get too deep into because I'm talking about a different statue. Sure. But the U.S. coins also for like centuries had a depiction of Libertas on the back. So I included a couple of those from the 1700s, 18s and 1900s. Super cool. Isn't that neat? So she was everywhere. It wasn't like... um just a random a figure. figure. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah. it was widely um, accepted in the United States as like a depiction of what we were aiming for. Yeah. In 1875, so 10 years, a decade after he suggested this, Laboulay suggested the French people finance the building of the statue because they had tried to get government funding and it wasn't happening, which mm. also happened in the U.S. They tried to get $100,000 and was vetoed, and they tried to get $50,000 vetoed, and then they decided... It was just going to have to be crowdfunded, which yeah. is the first time it was kind of like that crowdfunding happened. A huge project. Yeah. yeah. He also suggested the U.S. fund the pedestal and the site for where the statue was going to be. So it wasn't like all on the French people, which some people had a problem with. But it yeah. wasn't like it wasn't like half and half. They still paid way more than we did. It was right. like two thirds. But to receive a, a gift, you have to have a pedestal. For yeah, it. true. Oh. Gotcha. <laughs> I don't know. I would have thought it was cool. If you're getting a 300 foot statue, I'd be I like, know. you know, okay. Today, with the the stuff, they're like, hey, you want to pay a tax to? Okay, <laughs> true. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, like all of the sports stuff going on right yeah. now in Kansas City. Kansas City sports is asking for tax money to build a new stadium that no one wants. No one. I don't want. That's yeah. Okay. Say. Yeah. Let's not. Yeah. It, we don't need it. I don't think it's not. It's ex super not necessary but people want it so that we don't get left or something like the chiefs don't leave but it's yeah it's that, abnormal for sports to leave their yeah. hometowns like that's my politics but but the point is if they were saying hey let's build a <laughs> yeah multi-million dollar pedestal to put a multi-million dollar and you can pay for it from the french i'd be like well, what didn't we already You'd do this like, one time <laughs> <laughs> can they just polish that one it all went over, but it, it was at first it was very, very difficult to get funding, and right. it was just getting vetoed everywhere. So Bartholdi began sculpting designs in 1870, so it was like five years after the suggestion. So he was on board right away, and he actively oversaw sculpting between 1875 and 1884. That's how long it took to finish the statue. Years. It was nine wow. years. It was done by hammering 31 tons of copper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, What? Tons of copper sheets onto iron framework, which was done by Gustav Eiffel. So the guy who built mm. the Eiffel Tower. Was Heard that name. Responsible for the internals of the Statue of Liberty. Big iron guy. Pretty cool, yeah. One of the earliest examples of curtain wall construction. You know what that is? Nope. Okay. The outer layer is not load-bearing, and so it's like attached but fl- kind of floating. Like there's oh. like room between it so that w- in the high winds of the harbor, it could shift without... Um, like huh. putting pressure on the statue. That's cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. They also used asbestos between the iron and copper to prevent galvanic corrosion. Yep. Which we'll find out later didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so then it became extremely hard to deal with it. Yeah. And there was tons of corrosion. But I'll talk about, there's a restoration, a humongous restoration they did later that I'll cover. Okay. So as each piece was completed, like Statue of Liberty was built in pieces like her head and her arm her hand like everything was separated and as each piece was completed they were displayed at like international conventions and like they had it in manhattan for a couple of years like her um torch bearing arm yeah that's cool here's a picture i think this was in display in france 
and you can just go and take a look at it. And in all the old pictures, you can tell that it's still copper colored, which I think is oh, so funny yeah. because now she's green, but they're always dark, like very dark, which I'll talk about that later as well. But Super cool. Yeah. It says colossal yeah. hand and torch Liberty. Yeah. The guy's like, as I build these, I need somewhere to put them. Yeah. I'll and, just send and, them around the world. Yeah. And it would gain funding. People see it and they're like, oh, I can donate to make this happen. Like, yeah. that's so cool. So in France, to get the money, Bartholdi appealed to the rich and powerful to donate, as well as sold tickets for people to watch the sculpting work, which I think cool. I would definitely pay to see people hammering away yeah. to like build stuff. And he also did auctions and sold small models of what the statue would look like. And it's like a six inch one was a dollar and a 12 inch one was five dollars. So that'd but be I, so cool. To I think have. at the time, one dollar was like thirty three dollars. So. It's cool. Yeah. Cool. But it's an artist made piece. Mm hmm. Hmm. Or maybe it was mass produced or something, but like a mold of what it's going to look like. I bet you they're worth a couple more dollars today. They have one. They have one of the um, models that he made in the Liberty Museum, which is on the island that Mm. she's on. So talk about that, too. (laughs) It's going to be such a long episode. I'm so sorry. It's all good. Yeah. Why am I apologizing? I'm gifting you with all this knowledge. I'm along for the ride. (laughs) So that's how he got money in France. The U.S. stalled immediately because they couldn't get any funding at all. So then the publisher of the New York World newspaper, Joseph Pulitzer. Oh, I've heard of that name. Mm -hmm. Pulitzer Prize. Pulitzer Prize. My God. Friday afternoon. Sip of my coffee to recover. Sipping on that Starbucks. Mm. Hot coffee was a good move. Oh, yeah. I guess I wouldn't have considered getting a hot coffee, but I'm fully on board. It's a move. So the publisher started a do- oh my gosh started a donation drive to get a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Which at the time two point four million dollars. So it's just like hey, let's so just get like a little some momentum. So he started a donation drive. So in the newspaper, he said, no matter how much you donate, even if it's just like a penny, your name will be in the newspaper. So nice. it's this huge incentive for anybody and everybody to end up in the newspaper, and you can like add a note about yourself, like. Um, I wish I'd taken a note of an example, but it was like young, lonely, old lady, Ooh. like donates $2. Like you could just say whatever you wanted to say about yourself and he would print it. So obviously that gained a lot of traction, especially with like school children, like lots of young children just gave whatever they had, it's like just a uh-huh. couple of pennies or whatever. Cause it would be so cool for your name to be in a newspaper. It's the GoFundMe, the original. Cause that was like the only form of of media was just to see the newspaper. So like to have your name in there would be so cool. Especially in a big city, New York. Yeah. So you attracted 120,000 people who contributed and most gave less than a dollar, which is like I said, $33. (laughs) What? (laughs) $33. I mean, I would pay more than that. I think. Um, I don't know. So that was a big move. (laughs) Pulitzer. Yeah. So he pretty much single handedly was like the orchestrator of raising the money for the pedestal of the statue and he also did auctions of artwork and poetry and included a sonnet which has lines um on a plaque on the statue oh cool i should have also made note of that but i have so many notes it's unbelievable uh it's called the new colossus and um heard of that he had a poet write some poetry to donate so that they could auction it off. Yeah, I've heard all these things, but it's been almost 20 years. You think you heard it in school? Oh, yeah, I've heard those words. I feel like I didn't hear anything about this in history school. History was, like, awesome when I was in school. Big, I loved history. Fan. Yeah. But then um, real life came crashing down. We had to become engineers. Yeah. Gross. Had to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another cool thing is that I don't know if it was with his own money or with, like, leftover money or something, but... After the completion of fundraising, he commissioned a giant stained glass piece of the statue, which is now at Columbia University that you can go and like see. Let's see it. That is cool. Isn't that so pretty? Two earths. I wonder how big we're talking and how much was it to commission? I don't know. Pretty cool though. Yeah. Very cool. Incredible. That was fundraising. The Statue of Liberty. It's crazy. But it did the trick, and the sculpture was shipped to the U.S. in crates and assembled in what was called Bedloe's Island at the time. 
Right now, it's different. In the end, it cost France $250,000, which is $5.9 million today. Nothing. And the U.S. 100000 which is two point four. And the Statue of Liberty was entirely crowdfunded besides, I think, transportation. Wow. So the U.S. did a big celebration, a big unveiling of the Statue of Liberty. And it was the first ticker tape parade, which I've heard of because it's in Friends. Apparently, they went by the stock market and they threw ticker tape which a- as confetti. And nowadays, it's confetti. You throw oh, yeah. confetti. Oh, yeah. They make confetti now. Yeah. yeah. So that was a ticker tape parade. I was like, huh. I, d- I don't. I don't know. <laughs> what what year was the unveiling in the U.S.? 1886. The the whole, like, because then they had a ceremony by President Cleveland on October 28th, 1886. And, oh, I have a cool picture, too. This was a an Man. etching, which was a depiction of what it looked like when they unveiled it. They had uh, fireworks, and there was, like, the a big parade of boats and everything that came to go and see it. So That is cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And it's so funny seeing this uh, engraving and just, like, New York was not a city of skyscrapers at that. It was the late 1800s. It was all just like looked like a normal. Yeah, I don't know when all that started. You know, there's the famous photos of, I think it's New York, where they started building the high-rise skyscrapers. They had the iron workers. People were dying every single day. Oh, awful. um, But I think that was early 1900s, so after this, but. Yeah. I think. It had to have been, yeah, because this. In, in like old photos of it, even there's no buildings in the background because it's so high up that nothing comes yeah. close to it. There's a movie. Uh, I was lo- sorry. There's a movie I was looking at watching. Yeah. I've already seen. It's called Hildalgo. I tell you this. No. It's about a mm, a cowboy, if you will, a Western man who participates in a great horse race. And it's really. It's like 2004, 2005. It came out. But it's set in the 1890s, I think. Mm-hmm. And it, there's a scene, a cut scene, where they're in New York City and by getting on a boat to go to Europe. And uh, the Statue of Liberty is new in the oh. in the scene. They're like looking at it. I was like, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah I, I touched very briefly on that as well. But this, so this commemorative moment is when it began its history as a lighthouse. And it's not a success story. Oh, no. <laughs> So, okay. okay, I have so many questions. No, no, go ahead. It was designed to be a lighthouse? No, that's the problem. Yeah. So it was not designed to be a lighthouse. He made plans for another statue that looked very similar to be a lighthouse, but this one was not going to be, so. But the Egypt, Egyptian, the, the Egypt the one Egypt? was supposed to be a lighthouse. Yeah, it was so supposed that's to kind be. Of the, okay. Yeah, so it kind of crossed over, but he obviously did not, like, put forth any plans that would make this lighthouse. I don't really know what happened that they randomly decided to make it an aid to navigation. There well, was you know that tall thing? <laughs> it's tall. It has a light. Like, let's make it a lighthouse. Well, it's people like, used to no. use trees for navigation. They used to point at bays and say, yeah, yeah the tall elm over there. Yeah, you know that tall tree. Or they would, tree. like, put sticks, just like a tall stick. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, okay, it's a day <laughs> mark, but, like, at night, it, it was supposedly just pitch black. Like, uh. you couldn't see it. Crazy. So I'll go into the details, but November 16th, 1886, so less than a month after this ceremony, yeah. President Cleveland declared the statue, quote, be at once placed under the care and superintendence of the Lighthouse Board, and that it be from henceforth maintained by said board as a beacon, end quote. Wow. Ah, like, what do you mean? <laughs> Here, take this. You can't just say that it's, g- okay, it's a lighthouse. Take it's like, this. Oh, you don't know. It's so funny. So between then and its ceremony, lighting the sculpture had been just like an absolute, pardon my language, pardon my French, shit show. (laughs) Because it wasn't made to light up. Like he didn't consider like how is this thing going to be lit? And it wasn't his problem. He built the statue and then it was like, okay, if you want to light it up, you can light it up. But floodlights were, was like not a thing yet. And so they kind of started floodlight like it's funny because in this etching it's shown all lit up but that just wasn't a thing (laughs) well yeah they probably fireworks lit it up yeah electricity was also a new thing and so it was he got this giant statue how new out on an island uh electric light electric lights first appeared in 1880 on broadway the first they were brand new yeah we're talking brand spanking new that's yeah, you had that's six years later. Light bulbs that sucked. we want floodlights being able to cover 
Yeah, that wasn't 300 possible. feet on an island in the middle of water. Not possible. Like, <laughs> with that technology. The requirements were crazy. But it was first attempted to be lit the evening after its dedication. And it was so faint that the world said it looked, quote, more like a glowworm than a beacon. Oh. Absolutely tragic. Shame. Bartholdi never outlined how he meant to light the torch or the statue. Like I said, he didn't plan on it. So it was just a major struggle of getting it all tied together. And there were lots of ideas thrown around about what it was going to look like, what they wanted it to look like. The It's outlined really well in lighthousefriends.com. Okay, yeah. So if anyone wanted to go there. And Wikipedia also has tons of information on it. I know Wikipedia is not like a reputable source. but Was there electricity on the island? No. They had to lay a... Uh, wires or whatever you know um under cables on a, yeah along the bottom of the harbor and, and that was new technology yeah that that's none, crazy. none of this uh, it was just funny that they were just like oh crap like how are we gonna like this? <laughs> <laughs> run a cord out here <laughs> solar panels no like, do you know and he's like no leds no batteries no yeah so there were all kinds of ideas like beams straight up from the torch into the clouds or like <laughs> beams on her face coming from the torch like all kinds of cool ideas, but there was no way to execute them. And there yeah. was also no money, which is the other thing. Like, nobody funded anything yeah. other than getting the statue put together. Crazy. There are details. I wasn't going to cover all of them because they did all kinds of stuff. Like, they cut portholes in the torch and, like, <sighs> put colored sheets of glass so that it was, like, Ooh. I don't know. It was all kinds of all kinds tried. of weird stuff. But check out our links for details. You can okay. find all kinds of stuff there. Cool. So November 1st was the first day that the statue was reliably lit. But the American Electrical Manufacturing Company, who donated a lot of the equipment to light up the lighthouse, only agreed to keep the lights on for one week. So it was like, oh! Yeah. <laughs> They're like, here, we'll donate all of this stuff, but we're not going to fund the electricity that lights the lighthouse. Yeah. Like, you're going to have to figure out funding. Like, yeah. well, We'll fund it for a week, but yeah. after that, you're going to have to figure it out. So Congress so far had not been able to secure funding. So after Bartholdi came and approved the lighting situation, she was turned off for two weeks. So oh. she was lit for a week and then down again for two weeks. And during this time, the Lighthouse Board worked behind the scenes to secure funding and a team. And so then the president naturally rolled over responsibility to the Lighthouse Board. Let's go, Lighthouse Establishment. Let's go. November 22nd, 1886, the Statue of Liberty became an operational lighthouse. And the long story short is that it just she just sucked at it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no question about it. She was not made to be a lighthouse, so she failed as a lighthouse. The lighthouse board were totally against having this lighthouse, oh. or the Statue of Liberty, as a lighthouse. Because... They didn't think it made any sense as an aid to navigation. They didn't need a lighthouse there. They never planned on putting one there. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're already stretched thin. And then you yeah. have, oh, yeah, we built this artistic piece and uh, it's pretty tall. So, oh, it's a lighthouse. Yeah. Like, you take care of oh. it. Oh, <laughs> oh no. You know, hot potato. Yeah. So they tried a lot of different methods to increase the effectiveness of at least the outer lights, like the floodlights. Because when they first turned them on, it was like illuminating certain parts of the statue and then the rest of her was just in shadow so it was no. like oh no like what is happening and Bartleby came back in 1893 with suggestions for how it could help but nothing really worked at illuminating the statue mm. how they wanted it to but as a lighthouse i mean there, there's there's details she had a fresnel lens so like hell yeah the focal plane was at 305 feet above sea level Tall. yeah so i remember in the tallest i think the first episode other than the Lighthouse of Alexandria, hang on, let me check. Isn't Hatteras like 260, 280? No, not that tall. Uh, 230. Two. Two something. I'm guessing two. I'm guessing <laughs> focal plane of 192. 180 feet. Tallest in the U.S. Okay. I wasn't close. I, I thought it was 200 something. I thought it was two something, yeah. But anyway, yeah, the Statue of Liberty was the tallest lighthouse ever besides the Lighthouse of Alexandria, which was somewhere between 338 and 387 feet. Dang. So. Crazy. Which is so crazy because Pretty there's cool. almost no evidence that it ever existed. 
because its pieces were used to build something else. Alexandria? Yeah. Yeah. I need to cover that one as well. So did uh, the Lady Liberty fail as a lighthouse because too tall, didn't have the lighting technology, wasn't needed? I mean, yeah. as an aid to navigation? There was no gusto to making it work because it, it wasn't necessary. It was just kind of like, okay, the lights aren't working. Who knows a lot about lights in a structure like this? Because like the upkeep of no her as room. a lighthouse was not problematic. They weren't upset that it was this huge statue. It's like we have tons of experience working with tall structures. Towers, yeah. and it was just that they were peeved that they were given this thing that they didn't consider to be actually useful in navigating. Yeah. So they were just like, why do we have this? But anyway, her light was Fixed white had nine arc lights inside a small Fresnel lens. Cool. So I don't know exactly which order it was, but it was a Fresnel lens. And it should have been seen 24 and a quarter miles out to sea. Oh. But wow. it just didn't, like, if you think about it, the torch is not glass. Yeah. So you're not, like, you'd be seeing it through these tiny portholes that they yeah. cut. It just didn't make sense. There was a keeper. Can you imagine being uh, keeper of the Statue of Liberty. That'd be crazy. <laughs> a lot of climbing going on. I think it was a lighthouse for 16 years. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And he was the keeper the whole time. Yeah. There was no other head keeper. And originally they had four assistant keepers. And then it dwindled to two and then to one. And yeah. then it was cut. So his name was Albert E. Littlefield. They all lived. So all of these assistant keepers and the head keeper lived with their families on the island in a three-story building. Hmm. And Albert was a machinist for the lighthouse board for five years before serving at the Statue of Liberty as a keeper. And then because of his background in electrical stuff, he was paid $1,000 a year. Dang. When normally it was like $400 a year. Dude is pulling money. Yeah, because he had expertise. Special machinist fabricator man. <laughs> After the Statue of Liberty was cut, he returned to being an electrical engineer slash machinist until he retired in 1919. Do you know who he worked for? Or was he a lighthouse board. Oh, electrical engineer and machinist for the lighthouse board. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. I bet he has a fun story. Yeah, he I has mean, a lot more of than them. what we just said. There's tons of files f about him after death. I don't know what happened. Oh, like a ghost. <laughs> he wrote letters. <laughs> <laughs> he fell in love with Lady Liberty. No, it was like all kinds of legal stuff happening. Oh. I don't know if like, and it was always in... It seems like his son's name. So uh. maybe there was some kind of, I don't know, there was some kind of drama going on after life that overtook his legacy. <laughs> in 1901, President Roosevelt ordered the discontinuation of the lighthouse, and it was extinguished in March 1902 and handed over to the War Department. Because okay. originally the island was cut into three pieces. Part of it was the War Department, part of it was Lighthouse Board, and part of it was something else. I can't remember. Mm. Some other department of. It was still used as a government. defensive position yeah. for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So at least the lighthouse board part was handed back over to yeah. the War Department. So that, <laughs> that's like, the, the, I'm going to keep going, but that's the history of it as a lighthouse. That's 16 years is a pretty good run, but we're not even like, we're barely into the 1900s and there's still like so much to talk about the Statue of Liberty. So. Yeah. So I'm going to keep going for anyone that loves history past the lighthouse mumbo jumbo you're gonna get it <laughs> by the time it was extinguished the statue was already being talked about in the press for its creeping green patina um. so what we know today is the statue of liberty was alarming people that they were starting to see this patina show up on all the copper i have a picture that i'll show you of this like really old sepia photo of yeah. what it looked like before and you can tell in this picture that it's still copper so the statue itself was pretty dark because pretty much immediately after its unveiling it stopped being metallic and shiny because mm -hmm. patina like oxidation yeah and so it became like a dull copper so it was kind of hard to see her details so the patina was actually kind of a blessing so it started in 1901 and it started to turn green and fully covered by 1906 so Okay. Yeah. It was very fast, uh, like relatively fast process of turning. Well, it's right on the water. Yeah, yeah, it's inevitable. But Congress thought it was evidence of corrosion, and so they appropriated almost $63,000, which is over $2 million, to paint over it and do restoration work. No. Yeah. They, they painted just, it? No, because 
everyone had a lot to say about that <laughs> because people thought that the green was nice. They liked it because it black. the original was so dark that the the yeah. light like allowed you to see shadows and stuff. So the, the Army Corps of Engineers protested, as did the public. Nice. And after their investigation, the engineers concluded that it protected the skin. The patina actually wasn't being yeah. problematic, but it was like a good thing. And, quote, softened the outlines of the statue and made it beautiful. Well, they probably, I was thinking about copper. They probably used copper because it was malleable so they could form it. Not yeah. because they wanted a Not golden. Not because it was shiny. You know, it, it, I don't know. But I'm, I'm guessing it wasn't like copper that you see when you strip a wire where it's yeah. shiny and it's brand new. And they had to have known. I mean, they used yeah. copper for ages. Like they had to have known yeah. that it was going to oxidize. Copper working, metal working though in the 1800s is still not perfect. I yeah, mean, even the, true. There's a whole thing I won't go too far, but oh. the if you look up the metal, the steel that was used on the Titanic, which was built, what, 1913? Somewhere in there. We <laughs> talked about it recently. Yeah. The Titanic ship um, had a ductile to brittle transition temperature, DBTT, that when it hit the iceberg, the metal split rather than oh, yeah. deforming. Like, mm -hmm. Anyways, um, that's its own thing. But metalworking was not perfected. Yeah. Maybe it's still not. Didn't have all the details. Yeah. But so Lady Liberty was probably picked for malleability for copper. Not yeah. that they wanted to remain that color. But I wonder if they thought about it. Oh, like, well, as I was it's just thinking how strange patina. that they didn't think that it would turn green or like wouldn't gift it and be like, by the way, because the like the arm itself, we showed a picture. Yeah was shipped around and it was in Manhattan for two years and it's like nobody saw anything or like there was no mm. it was it took nine years to build this the copper didn't have any sort I don't know it looks like it corroded bottom to top as far as uh, being closer to the water I would guess yeah maybe just exposed metal mm -hmm. so it was fun that they referred to it as like more beautiful yeah over time like a lot of, I feel like nowadays if something happened it would be like, no, put it back to the way that it was before. Yeah. Like, this is a failure. But they just loved the way that she had turned out just over time. Yeah, it's and very unique. Yeah. And they and they talked a lot about, like, referencing the statue as, like, this beautiful, you know, it's just a statue. But people, especially, like, immigrants or mm -hmm. people coming over from Europe or whatever, just saw it as this amazing, like... In that the sonnet that I was talking about earlier, she describes her as the mother of exiles. So it's wow. like supposed to be a welcome to all the weary that are coming to America. And you have to pass right by her coming into harbor. So all these people just just shitty travel months of being on the sea in a ship and having to leave everything behind. They don't know. They don't speak yeah. our language. They don't know anybody. They're just severing ties with Everything that they know they show up in America and are welcomed by this like incredible yeah. depiction of liberty, just like of freedom. And I mean, at that time, coming to America was like we had tons of land, all the, opportunity. the opportunities. It was just yeah. you could be anything, you could learn everything. It's just it's like this really powerful image to come yeah. in after all this hardship and just know that. Like you were about to start anew and it was like an exciting thing. I've heard people talk about that. I mean, uh, in written history, like how how much of a badass you'd have to be to pack your life into a suitcase or a couple. Yes. And then go to a place you've never seen. And they don't even use your currency. Like you, know, you don't have anything. You show up and you tell them your name and they misspell it. That's your new oh. name. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Like Yes. Even Bailey, my last name was... Uh, part of that system yeah. that was misspelled. Um, I did want to say though, so that's, I mean, just like today, if they're like, oh, we can move to Mars, like there's a new colony on Mars, it's going to yeah. be great. That would be like, oh, I don't want to go there. Let's get rid of all of our stuff. <laughs> we'll just bring a suitcase and we'll be in this new place. Yeah. I think I have a very privileged life and a lot of the immigrants probably did not. So. No. But it's hard. Is Ellis Island out here yes are you familiar with that? it's it's next it's nearby it's like included in the same um i'll talk about it later it was okay. like during the restoration they included both islands in like the restoration efforts cool. so cool i didn't talk too much about it but there's um it's like an onboarding yes center i couldn't think of a name but a dock yeah on ellis inspection island so thing. it kind of solidified it's like originally bartleby meant for this to be 
a symbol of enlightenment, you know, like mm. this powerful symbol of like America being intelligent for having all like the freedom and the liberties, yeah. our freedom of speech, and our this Bill of Rights, amazing, and yeah, declaration. But it became this beacon of welcome of yeah. anyone who was coming into America, which I prefer. But they had a quote from a Greek immigrant who came in on a boat and saw the Statue of Liberty. And he said, quote, I saw the Statue of Liberty and I said to myself, lady, you're such a beautiful. You open your arms and you get all the foreigners here. Give me a chance to prove that I am worth it to do something, to be someone in America. And always that statue was on my mind. Think about the symbolism, too. Yeah. It's this thing you're seeing probably on a boat, which is incredible. <laughs> and it's a, on a boat. it's a gift from a Western European established people, mm-hmm. the French, which are respected through most of history. Right? Yeah. We all are at some point. But the French are, are well known for many good things. They've given this to us. The people have given this to us, if you know the whole story. Yeah. And then when given the gift, the Americans rose up and built a pedestal, de- dedicated an island, and put it in a foremost location mm-hmm. like New York. Yeah. It's just incredible. So around that time, whenever they gifted, or at least had the idea and kind of started to execute the statue, Labelle referenced that this time was oppressive for the French. There was the the Russian war, there was a war with Russia or something that they yeah. lost and Definitely. people a lot of people say that this statue was actually like a huge middle finger from France to its government where the people funded <laughs> this depiction of liberty and freedom because the government in France was so oppressive. It was like, well, I'm like we're going to fund this big thing like it's an F you. Huh. I don't know history very well. Didn't we fight the French in World War One? If I'm wrong, someone out there no. is just going to be so upset. Let me look it up. No, 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 we didn't. We came, we came to their aid. Yeah. Britain, France, uh, were the allies. Britain and okay. French. Italians, Austria at the time, and Germany were the Axis. And I don't even know if they called them that, actually, in World War One. That's a World War II term. But Oh, no. See, this is... um Oh, a war... Okay, so this is why I got confused. It's called the Franco-Prussian War. Uh-huh. Gosh, I probably butchered that. But... It's not Russia. That's why I got confused. It's France and Germany. Okay. Was the war that they lost and like had oppressive government, mm. yada, yada. Yeah. Sorry. So World, I meant. World War One, which was 1914 to 18, the Allied powers were France, UK, Russia, Italy, and US. Mm-hmm. And the central powers, whatever what they were called, were Germany, Austria, Hungary, uh, the Ottoman Empire, Bulgaria, and other minor central powers. Minor central powers. And Russia was allied? No, Ru- yeah, Russia was allied. We were with the Russians. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Sorry. Sorry, Sorry. all of history, no. but I'm an educated. <laughs> I know, we really don't know. I promise I can tell you about certain things. I just can't tell you about World War I history. Yeah. My great-grandfathers fought in World War I, all three of them. Oh. They were uh, my, my grandpa's dad and brothers, uh-huh. um, highly... They were Canadian. They highly discouraged um, not fighting in the war. Uh-huh. And my grandpa Complacency. was in college when World War II kicked off. Mm-hmm. He was like, I am not going to World War II voluntarily. <laughs> and he was drafted. And it's a whole long story, but yeah. pretty wild. Whole family relationship, with World War One and Two. Mm-hmm. Wicked. Wicked. Surprised I'm here, but here we are. Yeah. So that's the Statue of Liberty <laughs> for people. I remember that it was a lighthouse because we mentioned it. I think you did yeah. early on in like trivia. The first episode or something. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, trivia. I'm pretty sure I did. But super cool. Yeah. Even though it sucked as a lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> it tried its best. But the War Department held control of the light through World War One, when in 1916, German saboteurs set off a huge explosion near the statue. I didn't know that. There was a shipment of, I don't know if it was missiles or explosives or something being sent to Russia from the U.S. And they blew it up. And so it cost $2.7 million in today's money just to fix the island. And the right arm was damaged. And so originally you could climb up the right arm into the torch and see from up there. But at this point it was closed for like fixing and reconstruction stuff and it was never opened again. Really? Yeah. Never once. I, I mean, thought you never climb again. it today. Mm-mm. 
It's been closed forever. Huh. It's 1916. That's interesting. So maybe you're going to tell me, but when you go and visit, what can you see? Well, I'm going to let you know. Oh, oh, oh. There's details. It's actually quite nice. It's very inclusive. I, I'm excited to tell you about it. <laughs> so around this time when they closed the right arm and fixed it from all the explosion, the statue finally got adequate floodlights. Wow. So it only took like... 30, 30 years? Yeah. <laughs> Just a few decades. But, you know, you... You got to make do with what you got, do and what you can. electricity just needed some time to grow before I could really handle something of this stature. But let's see how can I pronounce it? Oh gosh, Gutsen Borglum. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry if that's wrong, um, but anyway, he later sculpted Mount Rushmore. Oh. So we got lots of big names around the Statue of Liberty. He redesigned the torch, replacing a lot of the copper. Of the torch with stained glass. What? Listen, I'm a stained glass artist. And that is an awful idea to replace something. Metal? 300 feet in the air. 300 something feet. Replace metal. I'll show you a picture of what it looked like before they replaced it again. (laughs) (laughs) And don't look. Okay. Stained glass itself. Don't, Don't. 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 You know. I'll show you a picture. You'll understand. But basically, that's a huge failure of a decision. Yeah, it's fragile. Come on, Gutson. <laughs> so in World War I, the image of the statue was used a lot for drafting to push the idea that to support. Thank you, French. We'll fight in the war with yes, you. Yes, to support and secure liberty for the rest of the world. You know, like, yeah. come on, look what we have. Look at this relationship that we've fostered. We need to go and help. Yeah. We need to go and help. The, so. the war to end all wars, right? Yeah. So like mm-hmm. drafting images often had the Statue of Liberty on them. To the like great kind war. of Yeah. Get some, get some emotional. It's a good symbol. Yeah. Of I US. have complaints with that. I think it's, yeah. I don't see it and say, let's go to war. But, you know, at the time. Yeah. Maybe. I see her more as like a soft, like a gentle, you know, like a hug. Yeah, there's no like cannon next to her. Yeah. No, it's not like she's. <laughs> 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 that reminds me. Have you seen. There's like images of like a Statue of Liberty in like a war helmet. No. It's awful, but it, it was another like promotional thing. It's oh like, gosh. oh gosh, just. No, I haven't seen that. I know what you're trying to do, but give her back her crown. It's like, uh, what was it? <laughs> Ruby Riveter? What was her name? Oh, um, Ru-, Ru. Wasn't Ruby. No. Ru- <laughs> Rosie. Ru- oh. Ru- Rosie, Rosie Riveter. the Riveter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. So Statue of Liberty was dedicated as a national monument in 1924, which that took a long time. A national, You're going to use it as a depiction to draft people into a war and <laughs> it's not going to be a national monument? I think that's crazy. Long application, lots of paperwork. It was handed over to the National Park Service in 1933, which is still nice. what it's under today. Nice. So, They've done good. So National Park, yeah. The rest of Bedloe Island followed suit in 1937. So the entire island is national park land. 100 years. Yeah. They immediately began transforming the space into a park and restored some of the areas, which is good because they were talking about it being just like a dump. Mm. Rotting wood stairs. Oh, like no. only one entryway was open for the, to get into the statue. And it was just like people talked about how they're surprised people didn't die going inside. Oh, my gosh. Like it was just like muggy and sick smelling like it was just like an awful yeah i mean there's no funding what are you supposed to do so anyway it was really good that was handed over to the national park service because they really did amazing things to it especially today so world war ii hit and it was no longer lit at night so they just stopped lighting it because there was like rolling blackouts for the war and it was only lit twice total during world war world war ii on the new year in 1944, very briefly, just like, oh, cool. happy new year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, let's take that back down. And the second time was on D-Day when oh. the light flash dot, 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 dash, which is Morse code V for victory, which is awesome. Oh. I mean, an awful event, but super cool lighting scenario. My grandpa was there. Stormed the beach in Normandy. God, he didn't even want to go. 
1956. I'm just going to flow right over that. Bedloe's Island was officially renamed to Liberty Island, which was Bartleby's original plan was to name it Liberty Island. So right. it just took, you know, a while. 60, <laughs> 70 years. Yeah. They're like, yeah, let's rename it. Yeah, we might as well. Might as well. Well, who's Bedloe anyway? I don't want to pay taxes on this thing. <laughs> so now I'm going to go into the restoration. Hit it. So they planned a centennial celebration in 1986. So 100 years of the statue being built. They wanted to have a big That's celebration. Crazy. So they needed to make sure that it was structurally sound and see what needed to be fixed on it. And holy cow, it needed some serious work. Like, yeah. I think it would have been cheaper to build a new statue. Oh. <laughs> so French and American engineers gave it a evaluation. And this was... um like five years before the celebration. So they okay. planned on having to do a lot of hard work. So in 1982, they finished their evaluation and concluded that it needed considerable res- restorations. President Reagan announced the Statue of Liberty dash Ellis Island Centennial Commission, Heck yeah. which was going to be responsible for funding or, you know, collecting funds for the project. And they raised $350 million. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I don't know if that's in that time's money or if that's in today's money. Oh, okay. But like, still, that's insane. $350 million. Hopefully today. It's Dang. Gotta, it's got to be, right? I mean, Wall Street in the 80s was pretty lit, but. Part of that was because the American Express card promised one oh. cent of all credit card purchases would go towards the project. And it's still on the American Express card. The Statue of Liberty is? Mm-hmm. <gasps> that's cool. Yep. You have one? Yeah, my work card. My old one now. Oh. Oh, I never even noticed that. Mm-hmm. And it's the same color. Yeah, they're probably going to milk that forever. Be like, we did it. The statue was closed in 1984, so we have two years until its centennial celebration, and it was closed that entire time for construction efforts Dang. and restorations and everything. And the reopening would be on 4th of July weekend, which would be called Liberty Weekend. Nice. So it's like this big thing. So let me pull up a picture. They built the world's largest freestanding scaffolding. Yeah. That is terrifying. If you think about, you're like 250 feet up in the air. Just <laughs> It's pretty wild. I think I have a little bit of a fear of heights because I can't even imagine. I don't think I can climb the Statue of Liberty. Everybody fears heights to some degree. They stand on it, don't they? Like the scaffolding, the stairs. Yeah, there's like boards. Um and the, I mean, at this at this point, they have like modular. They're not boards anymore, but modular metal aluminum pieces that are like platforms. Mm. So you build stairs into it. Yeah, I've been on some stair towers and stuff that are scaffolding, but uh, not three hundred feet tall. Uh, I'll be honest. The tallest one I remember was in a project where it was like forty feet of stairs. Okay, all made out of scaffolding. It was kind of. Sketch. Not my favorite. Yeah. I could do it, but I didn't want to hang out there. Okay, because I was like 60 feet up, but it was see-through grading. Oh, yeah. Like you just see down to the earth. I have never struggled so hard against my own brain yeah. than I did in that moment where like I, I genuinely struggled to take a step forward on this. The ground, like you can see. Yeah. <laughs> this is. I we, actually struggled. We can cut this if you want, but. This was my internship with the Louis Dreyfus company. Mm-hmm. They had these huge, they were seven stories, so 70 feet in the air uh-huh. uh, at least. And they're grain silos. And on oh. top, you could go between. And below you was like where the semi trucks drove. Yeah. So, and it oh, was only, yeah. I swear it was two and a half feet wide. It was like two people couldn't no. walk next to each other. And it was just a single handrail. And I just, I like walked across it maybe 10 times over the summer. Oh, wow. Never once like stopped and looked down. No. Because I just knew just it was going to be so through. sketchy. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I. It was high. I really thought I was going to faint. I, that was like around a distillation column. So, you know, those oh, get yeah. very, very tall. Gassy. <laughs> gassy. <laughs> <laughs> I may have been gassy from fear. <laughs> so, anyway, I just wanted to point out the scaffolding. It's insane. Yeah. It's incredible. So the first phase was using liquid nitrogen to remove years of paint layers on the mm. inside of the sculpture. Okay. Then blasting baking soda on the walls after that to remove coal tar, which they used to plug holes oh. and like any openings in Nasty. the wall. <laughs> I know. And then, so this is where the asbestos came into play. 
Bartholdi oh, had used yeah. to prevent corrosion, which didn't happen. Didn't work, yeah. So workers needed to use, they needed to wear moon suits, is what they were called, in order to work inside the statue, which had its own circulating, like, air supply. <sighs> like, I mean, they didn't know that asbestos was going to be such a huge thing, but. Sounds awful. Use something that was actually going to work. Don't, don't, don't get. Well, asbestos was fantastic. Asbestos was an awesome material. As far as material science goes, it was like uh, super cheap to make, super well insulating. Oh. You use it in a bunch of different like thicknesses. So and they're materials. always in ceilings, they, old I mean, ceilings. They, ceiling tiles, like pipe insulation, floor tiles, drywall. Dang. It was all over the place because it was like a miracle that we discovered how to make asbestos. I don't <laughs> know the history, but I think it was like 20, 30 years yeah. before they knew like, oh. Mm, it's killing people. Yeah. Like, and it's not even like questionable. You know how there's like everything yeah. that they say causes cancer these days. But this was like, there is no refuting yeah. it that it is. Mesothelioma. Wow. I think. Wow, that's a big word. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go with it. Yeah. So what'd they do about the asbestos? Oh, they had to wear moon suits. Yeah. That's why. So yeah, oh. they, they could, they have removed it all, but. Those guys had to be paid a lot. I know. I wonder if like people died. I didn't look up if anybody died on this. They were uncomfortable, I would say. All that scaffolding. Yeah. Why did they need it all the way over on the right? It seems like it's so far away from... I don't know. So they replaced all the iron armature, fixed large holes in the copper sheeting, which was like a total of 2% of the skin needed to be mm-hmm. replaced, which is pretty hefty when it's 31 tons of copper. Mm-hmm. The copper that they used to fill the holes was taken from the roof of Bell Labs, which was like a, lo- a laboratory yeah, or something. Bell Labs is famous. Yeah, it had a similar patina to the statue, and so they took it from that, and in compensation, they gave them the old pieces of the Statue of Liberty that they could do like tests on. That's cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I thought that was so neat. They're just like, well, can we take your roof? <laughs> They're like, yeah. I've got a business proposition for That's you. That's all right. So this is where the torch comes in. The this new one. Because it was stained glass for no reason at all. It's been leaking water since he first did it <laughs> in 1916. So the whole thing had to be replaced. Oh. The entire torch. So, the, But they made one from Bartholdi's original design. So it was exactly oh. the same as, as, as it was when it was built. And they gilded it with 24 karat gold. I was going to say, how is it that still gold? Okay. Yeah. As he originally intended, so that when it's sunny out, it reflects off the cool. torch, so it's really bright. And then at night, they use floodlights on it, so it still it lights up. That's really cool. So it's really cool. 24 karat gold just all over that thing. <laughs> How does that work? The carats of gold? Is it a oh, thickness I have or no a idea. grade? I don't know. I have to look into it. I feel like the, the higher quality, the higher carat, the more yellow it is. So it must be like concentration of gold particles or gold uh, element in the substance uh, i can't tell you Some, right. somebody let us know but the old torch that has stained glass all over it is in the museum that's oh on the island now so you can go and wow. see the old ones i am really surprised i didn't just knock it down so and it's oh so, come it's on so ugly. i'm like what is that <laughs> that is not what i pictured and i had this big to crap i had this wonderful idea of like a big like ball of glass oh. that would just you know just as yeah, a light like illuminate no it wasn't even pretty it wasn't God. an improvement it was just that looks like a middle school project they worked way yes, too long on because they left the copper they just cut squares into it and then put stained glass in the squares it's it's really awful that would be a terrible <laughs> what if you were commissioned to do the stained yeah. glass and you're like, like oh my god no. what an honor and then you see the idea and you're like oh, oh. no <laughs> i'm just cutting squares of glass do that. Yeah, so obviously I yeah, have a picture up cool. next to the new one, and the new one just looks so much better. It it's did a better so job. clean and really pretty. I love that gold. <sighs> there's the uh, Twin Towers <laughs> in the background. Th- there's the guy crawling over the scaffolding. <sighs> He's probably probably got fall arrest. Yeah, there's the uh, Twin Towers in the background of both yeah. photos. There, there's some things that happened to the Statue of Liberty after um, 9-11. Oh, there's a lot of pictures of the Statue of Liberty with the burning buildings in the background. I just didn't uh, think that was like a thing that we yeah, needed to show. A, we don't need to be. But anyway, to get back to the restoration, they found out that the right arm had not been placed correctly and had been swaying in the wind for almost 100 years. 
<laughs> no way. Yes. What do you mean? And one of the rays of the crown was a few degrees off, so it touched the arm every time that it swayed in the wind. No way. Wore a hole into her torch-bearing arm. No way. Because they had just built her wrong. They put her head on two feet off. <laughs> Let me go Go back. Can you go back? To what? I don't know. A picture. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see this. Okay. Or forward, maybe? Her head's two feet off? Yeah, so to one of right, those rays... To the left. Uh, to the to the right, it's just mind blowing that a statue of this stature, like we've got a a literal colossal statue, could be it's incredible put together incorrectly. Yeah, I work in construction, <laughs> and I, a lot of the guys that work for me do sheet metal work, and I've seen some things. Metal will bend when you hit it, so yeah, yeah. So it was it just wore this hole Crazy. in the arm. And they didn't find out until at this moment. So years. they patched that because the National Park Service couldn't really afford to replace the whole arm. So mm. they were just like, just patch it. And then they moved the ray on the crown so that it was no longer bumping against the arm. So the, I have a picture pulled up of them just Crazy. adjusting it. <laughs> Crazy. So huge. And you think about in this photo how high they are up off the ground. Like it just looks like, oh, I'm just up here. Like. You're at the top of the Statue of Liberty. I don't think they have fall arrest systems. Maybe they didn't exist yet. I don't think so either. (laughs) For those who don't know, maybe you care. I don't know. Construction has come a long way in the last like 20 years. um, Especially safety. Well, in the last 200 years for sure. But 20 years in safety. Like there's a lot of construction companies that won't even allow ladders at all. Like you cannot have a ladder on the job site. Because so many injuries happen from people falling from ladders. So And heights. You know, slips, trips, and falls. Yeah. But that's crazy. Ooh. So that was the that was like the basics of the restoration efforts that happened, filled with nervous laughter because apparently, at heights, I'm sweating. <laughs> 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 I think I have a problem. So anyway, immediately. So this is when I was talking about. Um, this is what I'm talking about. Nine Eleven. It's just mm. like this short thing, but immediately following the events that happened, the statue was closed for eight years. Because they realized they could not evacuate people out of the Statue of Liberty if something were to happen. It just kind of like, you know, the awareness boom yeah. of the um, like of America where they was like, oh, if something happens, how are we going to handle it? Like, yeah. it, it just made it so obvious that we hadn't considered if terrible people were to do terrible things. In the worst case scenario. Yeah. yeah. What, what would you do? And the Statue of Liberty was one of those things where it had one way up and one way down. It was yeah. small. There, there was an elevator, but like, it'd be bad. Yeah. Also, it's a symbol of America, so it's yeah. likely to be attacked. Right. I, I'm. Yeah, I'm sure that's what they were thinking in those times. Following nine eleven, one of the things that they talked about in the towers were the stairwells. It's a whole long thing. You should go look into it on yeah. your own. But they couldn't evacuate well in the stairwells and have firefighters help, and mostly because one of the reasons was they're too narrow. Mm-hmm. And they had gotten a special exception to be built more narrow than code. Oh wow! Because of floor space. Yeah. I mean, over these huge towers. Long, long story. Go read on your own. I won't bore you. But the end of it, the city of New York was like, "Oh, well, we've got to increase our width of our stairwells for safety. You got to be able to have one person go up, one person go down. Yeah. And you know, people will know that's how you go downstairs when you're evacuating. Mm-hmm. And I think it was in litigation for a while to make a new like code standard for buildings and the cost impact to those couple of square feet on every floor on New York, you know, real estate. I think it was eventually just dropped. Oh no. Uh, Maybe if you build a new building, you have to have a wider stairwell. Yeah. I don't know. There's many other things that happen. I bet it's like a new, like if anything built is new, then it has to conform to some standard, but But, just that's so awful but i just thought it was interesting because it's probably applying to yeah the infrastructure here too yeah yeah it was a huge thing but they added new elevators and staircases and reduced the number of people that could be inside at one time Mm. so i think total you can have 10 people in there in the statue at a time the pedestal is a different a whole different thing but um yeah so like a total of i think 240 people can be there in the day so like in one day, only a total of 240 people can climb the tower. So, Have you ever the... been to the St. Louis Arc Arch? No. Arch. Arc. <laughs> yeah. 
the, well, it's the gateway to the West, yeah. I think is what they call it. But I don't know, the, I don't remember the history. But you go up in an elevator that's like, you sit in it and it's like a ball or a, a barrel shape. Ew, no, I don't like that. I, I think it fits four people, maybe six. But it's like, as you go up, the elevator has to correct because you're, if you were to go up, you'd be like turned sideways. Yeah. So it has to like. <gasps> oh, no, no. Oh, no. And then at the top, <laughs> I don't know how tall it is, but I went up there 10 years ago. You did? Okay. At the top, there's these little windows you can look out and the whole thing is moving in the wind. It sways mm. back and forth. I'd pass out. They had to build it that way because, you know, oh, durability yeah. versus rigidity. Well, it's just like the Statue of Liberty where the outside was all flexible. Yeah. It's oh, insane. God. Insane. No, no. I no. It was cool. A lot of people don't go up. I would never. Yeah. So <laughs> I've sidetracked you, but I just think it's so interesting. Uh, I've never been to New York at all. I'd like to go. Hey, we went to New York together. Well, that's true. I've never <laughs> been to New York for more than a day. <laughs> How we rude. We didn't see the Statue of Liberty, though. No, it was part of my plan, but the ferry <laughs> that takes you out there would have been too yeah. long. So Vince and I had an eight-hour layover at uh, JFK. Airport, yeah. we had to pick and choose what we were gonna make happen in that time span. So it was uh, Times Square and Central Park. Central Park, yeah. And then and we got pizza. some pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so it was opened again after. So 2009, it was opened again. Okay. Originally, only about 20 percent of the island's visitors were allowed in the museum that was inside the pedestal. So originally, the museum was in the pedestal, and it was like a very exclusive club oh. that. If you wanted to go into the museum, it's like you either had to be a donor or mm. like going to the Statue of Liberty anyway was not like a tourist thing. Yeah, it was like a invitational sort of thing. Cool. Which, I mean, you could go, but I just don't think it was as common as it is today where people like really flock to go and yeah. check it out. In 2016, they built the new museum, which is on the island separate from the Statue of Liberty. I didn't pull up a picture of it, but... Um, they began construction in 2016, finished it in 2019, so which recent. is so weird. Yeah, because it's only f five years so ago. Weird. It's so weird to me that they're working on the Statue of Liberty today. Yeah. Like even the, you know, ancillary right. buildings. Like it's just like a another national park where they're constantly doing work on it. Just, I'm like, the Statue of Liberty? <laughs> <laughs> the lighthouse. The lighthouse? One of the worst ones ever. <laughs> Dang it. She's amazing, but she's not a lighthouse. That's for sure. Not no more. It also wasn't until 2017 that the statue was like added to the National Register of Historic Places. Hmm. 2017? That's less than a decade ago. What? Yeah, I don't know. I it was there. built in 1886. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that's crazy. National Register of Historic Places. People we got just don't like to do paperwork. I'm telling you. Oh, I can't feel like it can't be that hard. And who else is going to qualify than the Statue of Liberty? Do you know there's a Statue of Liberty in my hometown, Hayes, Kansas? No. About six feet tall. It's right next to the library. Oh, that's a shame. There's another one we saw in Las Vegas, Nevada. I didn't see it. Statue of Liberty. Yes, you did. No, we did not. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. saw the Eiffel Tower. New York, New York. We saw the Eiffel Tower. There's a casino called New York, New York. We didn't go. Well, you were there. We were <gasps> Are you by. kidding me? We didn't get to see. There's one in France, too. Really? I think I knew that somehow. How did I know that? Oh. National From Tower. Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Heard it straight from the source. I feel bad for our listeners, but this is just what we do nonstop. Yeah, this is we like just our normal get a normal life. Window into just our lives. Sit at a table and just put microphones on it. <laughs> okay, wow. I'll put a little bit about how you can visit in here mm -hmm. because it's important. Because one day we'll be visiting, and I said that I wouldn't be able to climb it, but I will. Whoa! I'm gonna make it happen. So you can only be reached by ferry. It's twenty five dollars for a ferry ticket. Ooh. To get there and back. Rough. But, so what I was saying is that this was pretty nice, inclusive. You only pay 30 cents more for a ticket to get to the crown. So to climb, it's not an exclusive thing where nice. you have to pay twice as much, pay $100 for a ticket yeah. to climb the lighthouse. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. You know what? To climb the lighthouse. <laughs> is there a stamp for the lighthouse passport? Book? Yes. Nice. You can get a stamp for the Statue of Liberty. Everyone get a passport now. USLHS.org. I don't have mine still. I got to go make you sure. You got to order it. Oh. I realized that I did have to pay for it. Sorry, I keep interrupting. So you're saying um, 30 cents. It's only 30 cents more. So, But the problem is that it's uh, you make a reservation in advance and it's like booked for months in yeah. advance. So you have to know when you're going to go and what time you're going to be there and then buy the ferry ticket for that specific time with the stipulation 
30 cents addition at the bottom that it's a crown ticket. Nice. And That's you can cool. also, it's there's the same thing for the pedestal as well. So 30 cents extra, you get to go on the pedestal. But it's 162 steps, so you got to be ready to climb it once you get in there. I right, got a nice photo of what the island looks like. It's got a beautiful dock. Yeah, a couple of them. But isn't the pedestal cool, the star shape? Yes, it, it is It's really always cool. been that way. It's really cool. I like that idea. I was looking, is that Ellis Island over there? Yeah. And that is our 50th episode, special edition, Statue of Liberty. Yes, Super she cool. was a lighthouse. 16 years a lighthouse. Yeah, 16 solid, sucky years. Not great years. <laughs> she gave it the old college try. Super cool. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> yeah, I got really excited. I love history stuff. Speaking of history, oh, we were recently interviewed by U.S. LHS historian yeah. and podcast host Jeremy Detrimal. Yeah. And it was a great time. Mm -hmm. So I posted about it on LinkedIn. Uh, I think that's the only place I posted about it. Okay. So... Just said thank you to him. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. We're on an interview. It's like 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I did not listen to it. So I didn't either. I'm kind of scared to hear myself. I don't want to hear myself. <laughs> but y'all can go listen to it. It's yeah. A it's light a lighthearted podcast. Yeah, lighthearted. Um, you can go to the USLHS website. It has a, under one of their tabs, it says podcast. And then you can go and listen to it there. Or it's like on Apple or mm -hmm. Google, Spotify, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else you want to say? Nope. You guys should check out our Instagram. Uh, you can go to our website, thelighthouselowdown.com, where you can leave us a review if you like this episode. Please do. We love it when we get reviews. And you can also leave a voicemail. Send us an email at lighthouselowdown at gmail.com. Is that? I said lighthouse. Yep. Okay. The Lighthouse Lowdown. <laughs> so that's it. We hope you enjoyed listening to this super special episode. And we'll catch you next time on The Lighthouse Lowdown. <laughs>